This is a question about thermal expansion. We've got a railway sleeper uh, which starts with no stress at 20 degrees C. Uh, sorry, it's a railway line or a rail. Uh, no stress at 20 degrees C and then the temperature changes to minus 6 degrees C and we're asked to find the stress. So the important thing here is that um, temperature changes cause strain and the way we calculate that is using strain is thermal expansion times delta T. In this case that's 12 times 10 to the minus 6 multiplied by um, the temperature difference which is 26 degrees C or 26 Kelvin if you prefer. Uh, so 26 times 12 times 10 to the minus 6. Uh, 3.12 times 10 to the minus 4 and it's a strain so it has no units. That is how much the rail contracts if it's completely free to move. But in this case we're told that all contraction is prevented so that's the amount of strain that's prevented. So that's the same as if we let it contract all the way it wanted to and then stretched it back out to its original length. So the stress is going to be connected to this strain by the Young's modulus. So we can say, OK, stress equals Young's modulus times strain, which is 206 times 10 to the 9 multiplied by 3.12 times 10 to the minus 4, which equals... 64.3 megapascals. So that's the stress in the rail um, due to that temperature change if it's completely fixed. Now in the second part of this question we're told the length of the rail is 27 meters um, so what we're going to do, we can use the calculated strain to find the calculated change in length first. Um, so uh, strain epsilon equals change in length divided by original length, and that means change in length is epsilon x, which is 27 times uh, 3.12 times 10 to the minus 4. Sorry, I put those the wrong way around. This is epsilon, that's x, but uh, you see where they come from. Uh, so 27 times 3.12 times 10 to the minus 4 is 8.424 times 10 to the minus 3. Uh, and this is a change in length, so it's in meters because we've been, the length of the rail was in meters. So what we're saying is this rail wants to contract uh, when it cools by... 8.4 millimeters. This is 8.4 mill 8.424 millimeters, and we're told that there's a six millimeter um, allowance. Uh, so we can say, okay, the um, um, the restriction on contraction is the uh, 8 millimeters that it wants to contract minus the 6 millimeters that it's allowed to contract. So there's basically 2.424 millimeters that it can't contract. Um, and then we can say the residual strain, which is kind of due to this restriction, the 2.424 millimeters that it can't uh, contract is our delta x. So that's 2.424 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by the length. So strain is a change in length or a, um, an amount that something has been stretched divided by the original length. And so we can calculate that. And that comes out to be pretty much exactly 9 times 10 to the minus 5. Uh, and that is a uh, um, strain, so it doesn't have any units. And then we can say stress is same as before, Young's modulus times strain, which is um, 206 times 10 to the 9 multiplied by 9 times 10 to the minus 5, which equals...
18.5 megapascals. So there's two different cases that we're working with there. In the first case, the rail is completely stopped from contracting. It's, um, it's held firmly in place and that leads to a stress of 64.3 megapascals. In the second case, the rail is allowed to contract six millimeters, but it wants to contract more than six millimeters. It wants to contract about eight and a half millimeters, this number here. And so what's left is two and a half millimeters that, that is residual um, kind of length that it's been stretched out from where it wants to be. And I know I'm using these terms like wants to be a bit vaguely, but um, sometimes they're the, the easiest way to think of these things, I think. Um, so there's 2.4 millimeters left of, of strain that, uh, sorry, of extension that can't happen. That causes a strain, and in turn, that strain causes a stress, just using the same definitions of stress and strain that we've used all the way through this module. And that's how that question on thermal expansion works.